grace and peace in Jesus. So tell me, are you, are you one of those people that you're reading a story, reading a novel, and it starts to get <clears throat> tension, or you're wondering what's going to happen, and, and it's just, just too much to take, and so you, you kind of like, you know, peek to the end of the story and see, see if the person makes it that you're concerned about, or if the, the couple's still together, and you, okay, okay, everything's good. I'll go back to reading now. Have you ever done that? Well, today, Christ the King Sunday, what it's about is God letting us check out the end of the story and see how it all ends. You know, in following through the church year, every year we follow through the story of Christ, the story of the mission of God, starting an advent with the anticipation of the Savior, His coming at Christmas, His life, His ministry, His suffering, His death, His resurrection, ascension, Pentecost, the life of the church, and this year especially the life of the church as we've been studying Acts. And then Christ the King, last Sunday in the church year, we jump to the end and we see how it all ends. Christ, King over all. The mission is accomplished. Every knee is bowing, every tongue confessing. Satan is utterly defeated. That's how the story ends. The story of the Bible, our story, in fact, the story of every person who's ever lived on the planet, it ends this way. Jesus, Lord over all. So, so, tell me, did anybody, you know, go to the, the Giants parade after they won the World Series or take part in you know, celebrating that? You know, big, big deal, you know. Season's over, World Series is over, and our team won. Let's celebrate. Big party, big parade. Well, Christ the King Sunday is like if you did that in June. You had a big World Series celebration parade in June because you looked ahead to the end of the season and you saw, oh, we're going to win the World Series. Let's have a party now. Okay? Or be like, right now, let's have a 49er Super Bowl party because they're going to win. Oh, now I just offended all the Raiders fans. Okay. But you see the picture? It's looking ahead because this world we're living in, the times we're living in are hard. We're dealing with death around us and disease and injustice and heartache and pain. There's so much that's good and beautiful, but there's so much that's so hard. And today, whenever they designed this church year 1,800 years ago, I'm really glad they did it because today is a day where, where we, we are reminded like, hey, I know it's bad, but here's the good news. Jesus wins. Okay? Here's the end of the story. Satan is utterly defeated. Jesus wins. Whatever we're going through, Jesus wins. In other words, it's the complete and, and total fulfillment of our prayer, thy kingdom come. As you know, Jesus told us to pray this way, and, and you know, I keep referring to the Lord's Prayer, you might have noticed that, because, you know, if, if the one to whom we're praying and through whom we're praying says to us, when you pray, pray this way, pray this pattern, we better stand up and take notice. And, and the Lord's Prayer, as we, we've pointed out, is to be a, a, a daily pattern for prayer, not just a, a, a rote prayer that we rattle off, but a pattern for daily prayer. And Jesus said, I want you to pray daily, thy kingdom come. Well, we must be pretty important to be praying for the kingdom. Now, what does that mean, though? What are we praying when we pray, thy kingdom come? How are we to think about that? Because, wait a minute, Jesus is king over all right now, isn't he? Isn't he king of the universe? Yeah. All power and authority has been given to me, he says. But we're still praying, thy kingdom come. You see, one of the things about our Christian faith 
is that we live in this time where now we're now in a kind of this, this tension. Sometimes uh, theologians talk about it as the tension between the now and the not yet. I got a lot of more fancier words they use, but we'll just go with those ones. The now and the not yet. Right now, I am saved. Jesus has redeemed me, forgiven me. I have eternal life. He's my Lord. Right now. But not yet. I am not realizing and experiencing that in its fullness. I still get sick. I'm going to die unless Christ returns. I still sin. There's injustice going on all around me. This world is not fully under the Lordship of Christ. So there's this tension, the now and the not yet, regarding the kingdom, too. The kingdom is now. There is a kingdom. There is a king. God is on the throne. We just sang that beautiful hymn, crown him Lord of all. He is Lord of all. But not yet. The tension is that the kingdom is not fully come yet. Not everyone confesses Christ. There is much death, disease, mayhem, brokenness, injustice in this fallen world, and there's much sin in our own hearts. Now, not yet. The kingdom now, the kingdom not yet. And so that's why, even though Christ we confess today is king over all, we daily pray, thy kingdom come. Okay, let's unpack that a little further. Thy kingdom come. As we're praying, thy kingdom come, what are we praying for? What's to be on our minds in these three little words? Well, a couple weeks ago, we were, we were unpacking thy will be done, and I mentioned how it can be very helpful in, in unpacking these to add some little prepositional phrases on the end. We're going to do that again, because uh, I think it really unpacks the full dimension of what we mean when we're saying thy kingdom come, and how much I believe our Lord wanted us to have in our minds, and how much he wanted, what He wanted to med- us to meditate on while we're praying thy kingdom come. And the first is simply this, thy kingdom come to me. Thy kingdom come in my life. You're my king. Your kingdom come to me. That's the angle that Martin Luther was getting at in his small catechism when he wrote about this petition. And I'm going to read it. If you want to look at it, it's on page 324 in the hymnal. The second petition, thy kingdom come, and he asks, what does this mean? Well, the kingdom of God certainly comes by itself without our prayer. Okay, that's that Christ is Lord over all now, right? But we pray in this petition that it may come to us also. There's the not yet. I'm praying that thy kingdom come to me in my life. How is this done? God's kingdom comes when our Heavenly Father gives us His Holy Spirit so that by His grace we believe His Holy Word and lead godly lives here in time and there in eternity. So, in other words, God's kingdom, I'm praying that it come to me, and by that I mean His Spirit and His Word lead me so I lead a godly life. In other words, Christ is king over all. He's king over my heart, and so my life reflects His kingship. That if you want to get a picture of what it looks like to live under the Lordship of Christ, just look at my life. That's what we are praying for, that our lives would be a reflection of the kingship of Christ, that we're living in His kingdom, which is not, which is not a democracy, it's not an anarchy, it's a divine monarchy. He is king, I'm not. And so I am praying Thy kingdom come to me. So when I'm praying that, I'm praying that this, the, the up dimension of our triangle, up, that I'm growing closer to Christ and imitating Him, following after Him. Your kingdom come to me. And that's, like I said, the angle that, that uh, Martin Luther was getting at in the catechism. The catechism itself is focused on my individual walk with Christ. But there's more. There's more that's going on here. Not just thy kingdom come to me, but thy kingdom come through me. Through me. That, that my, 
living under the lordship of Christ is not just about my personal piety and my sanctity and my walk. It's about my interaction with the world. And when I'm praying, thy kingdom come, I pray that God's kingdom come to me, but not just to me, but through me into the world. And so I see myself then as a representative of the kingdom, a representative of the king, that I go out of this place in our time with the king here, out of my personal devotions every day, out of that as a representative of the king sent by him to bring the kingdom into my daily life. And what I say and what I do, in all of my interactions with all other people, I am an emissary ambassador of the king, bringing the kingdom, kingdom values, kingdom love, kingdom service, kingdom witnessing, all of that. I am a representative of the king. And for that, oh, that's, that's, quite, that's quite a blessing, isn't it, to be invited to be a royal ambassador. Thy kingdom come as I go about my life today. And this is a, another part of seeing the lordship of Christ, that He is Lord over all. The, the response is, is not just, you're, you're Lord over all, so I owe you my obedience and, my, and, and give you all my honor. But also, He's Lord over all. So when I go out as His witness, as His representative, I'm going out with the authority of the King of the universe. Well, that's something. That when I am sharing Christ with somebody or loving somebody or serving somebody in the name of Christ, the king of the universe has my back and has sent me. That puts a whole new dimension on the service that we do and the sharing that we do. I am witnessing, living, loving, serving, being a Christian with the authority of the king of the universe. And when I am um, submit myself to, that, to the king of the universe, that I may live in obedience to him with his authority, then his power will be at work as well through me into the world. That's pretty big. So thy kingdom come to me that I may walk closer with Christ, but thy kingdom come through me into the life of every person I come in contact with as I interact with them with the authority of the king. But there's more. The Lord's Prayer, when Jesus gave it as this pattern for prayer, he also said something very significant to us in how it's worded. The Lord's Prayer starts off, our Father, not my Father. That's a really important point. It's not that we are not to pray individually. We are. Jesus has some instructions on that. You know, go into your room. Don't let, you know, that, that thing. But we pray together and we pray for each other. That I am praying when I go before my Father, not just as an individual, but as part of the body of Christ. And what I'm praying for myself that the kingdom come to me and through me, I am praying also for all my brothers and sisters in Christ, that God's kingdom come to them and through them. The person in the pew in front of me and behind me and next to me, our brothers and sisters in Christ down the street at Hopewell or up the street at the Nazarene Church or across the other side of the school at Grace, we pray for them too, that God's kingdom come to each one of us and His kingdom come through each one of us. We pray for our brothers and sisters in Christ, our Mission India partners, facing persecution as they, sh as they share Christ. Our Lutheran Malaria Initiative people in Africa, we pray for them. The kingdom come through them. You get the picture? There's a whole lot in these three words. And we dare not just let them roll off our tongue. So I think the Lord's prayer is to be prayed slowly in our personal devotions, thinking about each petition. There's a whole lot here. God's kingdom come to me, that it may come through me, but not just for me, but for all my brothers and sisters in Christ. 
And one more thing, of course, is we're praying that the kingdom come in eternity. We're praying for that day when the kingdom is fully realized, when the now is all and the not yet is gone, when all the pain and the disease and the evil and Satan and sin is all bound up and cast into that lake of fire, when all the universe is entirely the way God intended it to be. Christ on the throne. And all of us in word and deed, worshiping and honoring Him. We pray for that day. Thy kingdom come in eternity. And I don't know about you, I, I just feel for myself, the older I get, the more I long for that. I mean, there's so much that's good and wonderful in this world, but there's so much that's so hard. And we see so much pain. And there's times when our hearts cry out, Lord, let it be over. Come in your kingdom. Come in your glory. Let your kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Christ is king over all now, but not yet. And so we pray, thy kingdom come to me. O oh Lord, rule and reign in my heart and in my life. Thy kingdom come through me as you send me out as your royal priest, your royal ambassador. Thy kingdom come to all of my brothers and sisters in Christ and through all of them throughout the world. And thy kingdom come in eternity, in fullness and power. May the kingdom come for each one of us today and always. Would you pray with me? Lord Jesus, we confess and we acknowledge and honor you as King of all. Reign in our hearts. Reign in our lives. Cast down anything else in us or around us that would usurp your place on the throne of our hearts. And Lord, reign in our lives through us. Make us ambassadors, royal ambassadors, emissaries, that others would see you and your kingship through our words and deeds. We pray this, Lord, for us here in this place now, but for all of our brothers and sisters in Christ throughout the world, that your kingdom come to and through each one today and always. And we pray, Lord, with your church of all the ages, Come, Lord Jesus. Come, Lord Jesus. Let your kingdom come in power and eternity that all would confess and every knee bow, you alone. In your holy name we pray. Amen.